Hey YouTube, welcome to part 3 of the lock splitter build. Progress is still fairly slow because the heavy gauge metal I'm using requires multi-pass welding and also I chose to make the axles rather than buy them which is a bit of a time sink in itself. But it is progressing and let's have a look and see how it's going. The wheels arrived today for the log splitter. There we have it, two wheelbarrow wheels. Not for highway service, well they won't be going on the highway that's for sure, they're 16 inch wheels just to be able to move the log splitter around easily on the end of the tractor. And I am really impressed with the delivery time on that, that was super quick service. I only ordered them a couple of days ago and I didn't expect them till early next week and here they are at the end of this week, they're here. Which works out well because I'm going to start building the trailer over the weekend. Just cutting off the two stub axles now. Again, a bit of an overkill at 300 millimetres each. That's 12 inches for the people across the Pacific. Now I've got to take them over to the lathe and turn them down to the size of the wheel bearings. Running these stub axles down on the lathe now. I've already taken a couple of runs on it. Taking 50 feet at a time off of it. I've got about three more runs to go. Mm -hmm. Till might be starting to get a bit blunt. Give it another bit and see, but I think it is. I need to replace him. There's a lot to be said for buying a piece of axle. That should be one inch. They're three feet over. So I don't expect it will fit, but I will go and try it before I take those other three feet off. I think I best go and measure these wheels. They were sold as one inch bearings in the wheels, but I'm starting to suspect they are not. And they aren't either. They are sold as one inch bearings, which is 25.4 millimetres, but that's the problem with living in a country that's half metric and half imperial. People tend to take liberties. These are 25 millimetre bearings, and because Someone said, oh, that's near enough, we'll call them an inch. So, I now have to take a bit more off them. Probably about, about 10 thou, by the looks of it. All right, well, that's got it. Uh, turn the camera off, you've got to do the same for the other one. And as I say, this is a good argument for buying a piece of axle already made. Not gonna happen in my case, because trying to find one around here is difficult. It would certainly make life a lot easier. I suppose I could have ordered one off eBay. Didn't really think of it. I just thought I'll turn one down. Anyway, on with the show. I've got to drill a hole through these stub axles for a split pin to hold the wheel on. Doesn't need any more than that. I'm going for a 3.32nd of an inch hole. I've got my trusty hack together angle iron liner upper thingy for drilling into round rods and pipes. Old man made this when I was a kid sometime. I'm still working well. Got him nicely through. And the other one as well. And that's the other one. These are part 014, I call them the axle box. The sole reason for them is that I find it really difficult to get in and weld on a round rod there. So I weld along here on these and along there on these. Seems to do just as good a job as holding an axle in place and makes the welding a lot easier, for me anyway. So, the thing to do now is to make sure that we get these perfectly lined up down the length of the cross member and then tack them on each side. I actually reckon my eyeball's good enough for this. I'm going to use some 6013 for this, the 2.5mm rods. In this case, I'm just going to burn through the rust and the gal on that with the rod. I'm pretty sure I can get a good enough weld to hold that axle in place doing that. I'll just get all the things prepared and get started on it. Oh, and I'm not sure whether I mentioned it before or not, but I'm just eyeballing this for being parallel to the cross member. I reckon I can get it good enough. If it's tating or out, quarter of a degree, I don't think it'll matter. And I'm pretty sure I can get it within quarter of a degree. Finish welding these in and get a weld on both sides of them. Another case of hold your breath while you weld and back away to take one. Alright, 
Oh, well, the other side of that off camera, because it's going to be harder to get an angle on it to see. And now that these blocks are in place, we're assuming these blocks have been cut the right length, line the back of the axle up because we want the wheels sticking out a little bit from the cross member. And it's just tacked in place. I used uh, 6013 3.2mm, that's one eighth of an inch rods for that. I'll get the other axle and I'll tack him in place and then I'll weld them both in. Again lining up on the back side of these. If you have a preference on which way your split pin goes through, now's the time. We put a nice big bead along that while well, these axles permanently in place. If you've got a better way of attaching these axles to a cross member like this, by all means, go for it. This just happens to work for me. I'm going to lay him down there like that so I can get a nice fillet in here. I'll just give you a quick cut for the wire brush and we'll have a look and see how it went. I'm going to do four like that and I'm going to call them pretty good. Focus on that. Come on, surely. Oh yes, there we go. Well, I'm pretty happy with that bead and I'm sure she's got good bite on both sides and it'll do a good job holding it. Four more like that and the axles are on. Right, I'm welding this back piece on first before I weld these side pieces on here. I'm doing the back first so I can get a weld down all around inside then I'll weld the side pieces on. It's way overkill for what we're doing but I intended the log splitter to take at least a 60 ton ram and possibly an 80 ton. So I've sized it for 60. Some of the components I'm not sure about going above that. I'm pretty confident we'll go well above 60 tonnes and not bend. And I'm ready to put these side pieces on the bottom end of the I-beam. These pieces here, they fit down in there like that. And I'm going to weld them in again with the 7024 rod. Running fairly high on amperage, around the 180 mark. Because this is 12mm flat that I've got to weld in there, so need to bite into it a bit. As I say, this is way overkill, but uh, I'm designing this end of it for at least a 60 tonne ram, even though the one I'm going to put on is only about 20 tonnes. Two tacks around it first. Right, just a well down on him. Love it when the flux peels off like that. Hmm, very nice weld. Push him over, I'll prep the other one and do him off camera. I just couldn't resist, I had to show off this flux peel here. Beautiful. Now these aren't marked in the plans at all. I've cut these, they're purely cosmetic. And I just like to weld plates over the end of the open tubes. So I say not in the plans and up to you whether you do it or not. I prefer to see the tubes closed off. But that's just a personal preference. And in case you're wondering why there's only three there, there's one for each end of the cross member, one for the back end of the long member. But the front of the long one I'm thinking is going to need something different because I'm thinking I'll be cutting him on a bit of an angle and putting something different across him in order to make a attachment to go onto the tractor. Whether it's for a tow ball or whether it's just for a pin, I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. Probably just a pin. Well, today was a bit of a perfect storm of deliveries. I had three items on order. Well, actually more than three items, but three items arrived today. And that is the engine, the hydraulic pump, and the hydraulic control. Now, the hydraulic control and the hydraulic pump came from overseas. The engine came from Melbourne, but they all arrived on the same day, which is pretty amazing. All three parts I needed them together. Unfortunately, events would conspire that this took considerably longer than I anticipated for it to get put together, but at least I had the parts here. The engine's a Chinese knockoff of a Honda unit. Now, it seems quite good, and I'm sure it's going to do the job for the log splitter, because the log splitter is only going to be used periodically, like you know, a couple of times a year, to split some wood ready for the winter. It seems quite well made, although I'll take note that the Honda engine is, I think, uh, 37 kilograms from memory, and this one is 32 kilograms. So they've obviously taken some shortcuts with the parts and maybe made them a little bit thinner than Honda. 
But as I say, it's not like it's going to be used 24-7. It will be used maybe several hours on two or three days a year. So I expect this will be my lifetime. I also mentioned at this point that I chose this engine because it has a maximum rating of 16 horsepower and a continuous rating of I think 13 horsepower. Both of these figures are above what I need for the pump but I figure it's always better to have more than less and anything else that I could find buy at a reasonable price and by way of an engine that is would have been less horsepower than the pump required so that's why I went for this one, it was only 30 or 40 dollars more than the next size down that I could get which was too small, so I got this one. And this is a hydraulic pump, it's a highway unit which means it runs at two speeds, it's 4 gallons per minute under really high pressure and 16 gallons per minute under low pressure. So when you wanted to move the ramp quickly to get it up to the face of the wood, it's running 16 gallons per minute and moves the ramp 4 times quicker than the high pressure side. When it hits the wood and needs some more force to push through the wood, the pump automatically switches down to 4 gallons per minute and a higher pressure and pushes its way through the wood. Best of both worlds and worth the extra money. And that brings us to the control unit for the hydraulics. It rated at 18 gallons a minute, which is way more than is needed for the pump, but it doesn't matter. There'll be no restriction to the play, so no pressure loss, or virtually no pressure loss, through the hydraulic control, I hope. It's got an automatic kick-off, I'm not sure how that works, but I gather from a little bit of reading that you can put the lever so that the ram retracts and it will just automatically stop when it reaches the end, but I'm not sure. I'll experiment with it. If the automatic kick-off features are no use to me, it doesn't matter. The control will show up to the same price as one without that feature. And I'll just have to experiment with it and see how it goes. Hey, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. As usual with my larger project, plans are available for download from my website. However, they're a guide only. If you do decide to build one from them, you do so entirely at your own risk. If you'd like to see more of my project, you can go to my channel or browse to my website. Don't forget to click like, comment and subscribe for more. Until next time.